Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Sikandar and today I am going to discuss about the Gina Guidelines of Asthma, Chapter 1. So, uh, what is the definition of asthma? Asthma is a heterogeneous disease usually characterized by chronic airway inflammation. So, like it is a heterogeneous disease, it means like there could be environmental factors or genetic factors that can lead to asthma. And it is usually characterized by chronic airway inflammation and it is defined by history of four respiratory symptoms are there. First one is wheeze, shortness of breath, chest tightness and cough. And these symptoms vary over time and intensity together with variable expiratory airflow limitations will be also there. Like there will be a variability in FEV1 and peak expiratory flow rate now they are telling uh, about the asthma only so uh, asthma is common uh, disease which is chronic in uh, nature and it affect 1 to 18 percent of the population in different countries so they are telling like what are the variable symptoms of asthma these are wheeze shortness of breath chest tightness and cough and there will be variability in expiratory airflow limitations so both symptoms and airflow limitations characterized by variability over time and intensity as we have already discussed. These variations are often triggered by the factors such as exercise, allergen, irritant exposure and change in weather and viral respiratory infection can trigger these all four symptoms. So they are telling uh, these uh, symptoms can uh, like uh, symptoms and airflow limitations may result spontaneously or, or in response to medication and may sometimes be absent for weeks or for months and then uh, on the other hand patient can experience episodic flare-up exacerbation of the asthma that may be life-threatening so it could be life-threatening in few condition it could be uh, it can resolve spontaneously by itself so there could be a, a large variable uh, variability of patients Asthma is usually associated with airway hyper-responsiveness to direct or indirect stimuli and with chronic airway inflammation. These features usually persist even when symptoms are absent or lung function is normal but may normalize with treatment. So with treatment, these symptoms can normalize. After that, what are the phenotypes in asthma? So there are like, uh, we will discuss five phenotypes which are like most common phenoty uh, phenotypes. First one is allergic asthma. This is most easily recognizable asthma phenotype, which often commences in childhood. So it will uh, start earlier in uh, childhood only. And there will be past history or family history of allergic disease, such as eczema, allergic rhinitis, or food or drug allergy. Examination of the induced sputum of these patient will contain eosinophils. Very, very important. So sputum will contain eosinophils. And patient with this uh, asthma phenotype will respond very well to inhaled corticosteroid treatment. So, like these are features of this allergic asthma, like eosinophilic will it will be in eosinophilic in nature, and it will very well respond to inhaled corticosteroid. Second category is non-allergic asthma. Some patient with uh, uh, with asthma that is not associated with allergy and uh, like these patients ka cellular profile will contain neutrophils very very important it will not contain a lot of eosinophils it will contain neutrophil eosinophil and a few in other inflammatory cells patients with uh, non-allergic asthma often demonstrate less short-term response to ics so they will not respond well to ics so Allergic asthma patient will respond well to ICS, but non-allergy will not response, respond. Then comes adult onset or late onset asthma. Some adult, particularly females, patient with asthma for the first time in adult life. These patients tend to be non-allergic and often require higher doses of ICS and are relatively refractory to corticosteroid treatment. And we should uh, distinguish this uh, adult onset asthma with occupational asthma also which is usually uh, due to exposure at work. Asthma with persistent airflow limitation. Some patients with long-standing asthma develop airflow limitations. 
uh, which is persistent or like um, irreversible in nature this is thought to be due to airway wall remodeling and a uh, fifth is asthma with obesity some obese patient with asthma have prominent respiratory symptoms and little eosinophilic airway inflammation now you will discuss pattern of respiratory symptoms that are characteristic of asthma so like these upper uh, sympt symptoms are like suggestive of uh, asthma and these lower things are like they will suggest like patient is unlikely having asthma so the following features are typical of asthma if present increase the probability that patient is having asthma respiratory symptom of wheeze shortness of breath cough chest tightness so patients experience more than one of these type of symptoms symptoms are often worse at night and early in the morning so it will worse at the time of night and early morning symptoms vary over the time and intensity symptoms are triggered by viral infections exercise ex allergen exposure change in the weather laughter irritant such as car exhaust fumes smoke strong smells so these can initiate the episode of asthma uh, now they are telling the features which decrease the probability of that respiratory symptoms are due to asthma so these are like they are telling if patient is having isolated cough with no other respiratory symptom or chronic cough production or shortness of breath associated with dizziness light headedness or peripheral tingling or chest pain or exercise induced dyspnea with noisy inspiration so if these features are present then patient is unlikely having asthma now we will come to the diagnostic flow chart for clinical practice they are telling patient with respiratory symptoms come to you we will ask if patient is having typical symptoms of asthma or not if he is telling no then further history and test for alternative diagnosis if uh, these symptoms are typical symptoms of asthma are present then we will do stn examination which supports uh, diagnosis of asthma if these are present if they are not present then we will again go like to alternate diagnosis if these are present uh, like stn examination are suggestive of asthma then is patient is already taking asthma controller treatment or not we will ask for that if he is already taking then diagnostic steps in patient already taking then we will go to different uh, thing if he is not taking any other uh, any controller medication for asthma then we will perform spirometry test so they are telling uh telling like if patient already taking asthma control treatment if he is taking then we will go to another thing then if he is not taking these things then we will perform spirometry and pf with reversibility test and if result supports asthma diagnosis or not if it supports then we will treat patient for asthma if he is not supporting the diagnosis of asthma then we will arrange other test and confirm the diagnosis for asthma if still he is not like confirming uh, reversibility is not there in these test then we uh, then also we can consider trial for treatment for like most likely diagnosis or refer for further other investigations so this is like very simple flow chart then we comes to uh, diagnostic criteria for asthma in adult adults adolescent or children uh, from 6 to 11 years so like it means in any patient with more than 6 year of age this is the diagnostic criteria for asthma very very important like this is the most important slide of this whole uh, chapter so they are telling first thing is history of variable respiratory symptoms so uh, these are uh, respiratory symptoms wheeze shortness of breath chest tightness and cough we have already discussed these four uh, symptoms critical uh, important symptoms so they are telling more than one type of respiratory symptoms should be there and they are telling in adults isolated cough is seldom due to asthma so isolated cough we will not consider here very very important but uh, if more than one of any this uh, other than uh, isolated cough uh, respiratory symptom is present then we will consider it na uh, then they are telling symptoms should occur Uh, symptoms occur variable over time and with intensity and it should worsen night and during morning times in waking up symptoms are often triggered by exercise laughter allergen or cold air and symptoms often appear or worsen with uh, viral infections very very important so now they are telling like confirmed variable expiratory air flow limitations should be there so uh, first 2.1 thing is like documented expiratory air flow limitation should be there so what they are telling like fev1 should be reduced and the ratio of fev1 divided by fvc should be less than 0.7 uh, uh, they are telling like it should be at the time when fev1 fev1 is reduced confirm that fev1 upon fvc is reduced compared with the lower limit 
of the normal so uh, we consider in our uh, indian scenario like uh, this lower limit is uh, less than 0.7 so they are telling it uh, normal is like 0.75 to 0.8 in adults and more than 0.9 in children so according to this thing like uh, it should be uh, if it is less than like 0.75 or 0.9 in children then we'll consider it uh, asthma now we'll come end so and uh, documented excessive variability in lung function should be there so out of the six things there should be uh, one thing should be there so what is this so they are telling like uh, positive bronchodilator responsiveness test should be there so what is this test they are telling increase in fev1 more than 12 percent and more than 200 ml and great confidence if increase more than 15 percent and like we will be sure if it will be more than 15 percent or more than 400 ml in children's they are telling increase in fev1 should be more than 15, uh, 12 percent of predicted as uh, adults and they are telling uh, it should be measured after 10 to 15 minutes of giving 200 to 400 microgram of salutamol or alutrol or equivalent so they are telling compared with pre bronchodilator reading we will compare these findings and positive test more likely if uh, bronchodilated are withheld so before test we should withheld saba like for uh, four hours and twice daily lava for 24 hours and once daily lava for 36 hours so we should withheld these bronchodilators and after that only we will do these uh, spirometry test second thing is excessive variability in twice daily pef peak expiratory flow over two weeks so they are telling in adult average daily diurnal pef variability should be more than 10 percent and in children it should be more than 13 percent in adult it should be more than 10 percent in uh, children it should be more than 13 percent so twice daily pef over two weeks this is known as excessive variability then comes third point significant increase in lung function after four weeks of anti-inflammatory treatment so if we are giving anti-inflammatory treatment then after four weeks there should be significant increase in lung function and how we will denote like there is significant increase then like they are telling fev1 should increase more than 12 percent or more than 200 ml from baseline after four weeks of treatment now they are telling uh, fourth thing is a positive exercise challenge test in adult if fall is there in of fev1 of more than 10 percent or uh, 200 ml so uh, <clears throat> uh, so they are telling like fall is uh, more than 12 percent or 15 percent if uh, in uh, they are telling like fifth thing is positive bronco uh, bronchial challenge test is there so it is usually only for adults not for children so uh, bronchial challenge test is like fall in fev1 from baseline of more than 20 percent with standard dose of methacholine or more than 15 percent with standardized hyperventilation hypertonic saline or manitol challenge so with these things it should be more than 15 percent and with methacholine it should be more than 20 percent then we will call it positive bronchial challenge test and it is used only in adults sixth thing is excessive variation in lung function between widgets so uh, it is having good specificity but poor sensitivity so what is this they are telling in adults variation should be more than of fev1 should be more than 12 percent or 200 ml between widgets outside of respiratory invasion. so uh, they are telling you respiratory infection should not be there and in children's fev1 should be like more than 12 percent or fev1 or more than 12 percent in pef so they are telling ultimately the variation in fe even should be more than 12 percent and f uh, pef uh, should be more than 15 percent between digits and uh, there should be no uh, these this like infection should not be there so uh, this is the diagnostic criteria like we have already discussed so yeah so uh, like this is the diagnostic criteria history of variable respiratory symptoms should be there as we have already discussed and confirmed variable expiratory air flow limitation should be there and we will document uh, this way there should be documented expiratory airflow limitations as well as one of these uh, tests should be there now we'll come why it is important to confirm the diagnosis of asthma this is important to avoid unnecessary treatment or over treatment or to avoid missing other important diagnosis in adult with asthma diagnosis in last five years or one third could not be confirmed as having asthma so they are telling one third patients are not confirmed as uh, asthma after repeated testing over 12 months and stage withdrawal of control treatment this uh, so diagnosis of asthma was less likely to be confirmed in patient who had not had lung function testing performed at the time of initial diagnosis some patients had serious cardiorespiratory conditions that had been had been misdiagnosed as asthma so that's why the diagnosis of asthma is very important so they are telling history and uh, family history should be there like commencement of uh, commencement of respiratory symptoms symptoms in childhood history of allergic rhinitis eczema 
or family history of asthma allergy increases the probability that respiratory symptoms are due to asthma however these features are not specific for asthma and are not seen in asthma, all asthma phenotypes they are seen in uh, only few like allergic uh, asthma phenotypes patient with allergic rhinitis or atopic dermatitis should be asked specifically about the respiratory symptoms to confirm the diagnosis of allergic asthma phenotype they are telling in physical examination physical examination patient with asthma is most commonly it is normal and most frequent abnormality is expiratory wheeze or ronchi will be there on auscultation but this may be absent or only heard in force uh, expiration so they are telling this is like it could be a possibility like it is present only in the force expiration very very important according to general line wheezing may also be absent during severe asthma episodes because of silent chest but at such times other physical sign of respiratory failure are usually present so wheezing may also be heard with inducible laryngeal obstruction copd respiratory infection trachomalacia inhaled a foreign body so these all can be the cause of what uh, wheeze and they are telling like crackles crepitations or inspiratory wheezing are not feature of asthma very very important like if patient is having crackles or uh, inspiratory wheezing is there then this is not the feature suggestive of asthma and examination of nose may reveal a sign of allergic rhinitis or nasal polyposis so we should uh, check this thing also so uh, next thing uh, lung function testing to document variable expiratory airflow limitation so they are telling asthma is characterized by variable expiratory airflow limitations expiratory uh, lung function varies over time and magnitude as we have already discussed so they are telling to greater extent than in healthy population like they are discussing here in clinical practice once an obstructive de defect has been confirmed variation in airflow limitation is generally assessed from variation in fev1 or pef and uh, what is variability so they are telling like variability refers to improvement or deterioration in symptoms and lung functions and uh, excessive variability may be identified over the course of one day or from day to day or from visit to visit or seasonally or uh, from a reversibility test so they are telling variability like it could be present like from in a single day or day to day or uh, over the visits different different visits but what is the reversibility so they are telling reversibility which is no, also known as responsiveness responsiveness is like rapid improvement should be there in fev1 measured within the minutes after inhalation of rapid acting bronchodilator such as 200 to 400 microgram of salbutamol so this is reversibility reversibility is rapid thing and uh, there should be only improvement but in variability like uh, it could be improvement or it could be deterioration of the symptoms and uh, it is like not a condition which used to happen in minutes it used to happen in uh, during a whole day or during day to day uh, uh, difference will be there into day to day variability day to day uh, testing so now they are telling uh, in patient with typical respiratory symptoms obtaining evidence of excessive variability in expiratory lung function is an essential component of diagnosis of asthma so an increase in lung function after giving bronchodilator or decrease in lung function after bronchial provocation test like giving methacholine Variation in lung function beyond the normal range when it is repeated over time, either or separate visits or home monitoring over the last one to two weeks. So these these things will uh, usually uh, by these things we check like variability and uh, how much variation in expiratory flow is consistent with asthma. So they are telling. So this is like also very important thing. This is uh, there is an overlap in bronchodilator reversibility and other measure of variation between health and disease in a patient with respiratory symptoms. The greater the variation in their lung function, or more times excess variation is seen, the more likely diagnosis to be asthma. So variability is very very important in this asthma patients. Generally, in adult with respiratory symptoms typical of asthma, increase or decrease in FEV1 of more than 12% or more than 200 ml from the baseline, or change in PEF more than 20% is accepted being consistent with asthma. Very very important. now they are telling a uh, diurnal pf variability is calculated from twice daily reading as the daily amplitude percent mean so they are telling we used to check the days ka highest uh, what is the days highest uh, pf minus what is the days lowest uh, pf divided by mean of days highest and lowest suppose like highest is 400 lowest is uh, 100 so we will minus it and what is the mean of 2 250 like 500 divided by 2 so uh, this is 450 uh, 250 so it uh, into 100 so what will be this thing it will be 300 divided by 250 so it will be around like uh, 6 by 
10 to 100 okay so it is like uh, around one uh, like 12 percent so this is around 12 percent so they are telling yeah so they are telling uh, we will remove this thing yeah now we'll go so they are telling so uh, <clears throat> this change should be uh, if it is more than diurnal variability more than 10 percent in adults and more than 13 percent in uh, children then we will tell it like this variability is excessive and it could be uh, asthma episode if fev1 is within the predicted normal range when patient is experiencing symptoms such so uh, symptoms are there but fev1 is in normal range this reduces the probability of uh, symptoms are due to asthma like they are telling if fev1 is in uh, normal range then it is unlikely like patient is having asthma it could be due to other things okay now we'll go to other test what are the other test other uh, so first is bronco uh, bronchial provocation test so what is this they are telling like uh, one option for documenting variable expiratory airflow limitation is to refer the patient for bronchial provocation testing challenge agent including meth inhaled methacholine histamine and exercise and they are telling eucapnic voluntarily hyperventilation and inhaled uh, manitol these all are like causing bronchoconstriction and these are used as uh, for uh, bronchial provocation so they are telling these tests are moderately sensitive but having limited specificity it means like if patient is having negative test then it is un, uh, it used to rule out the asthma if uh, these this uh, test is negative then it is unlikely asthma if this test is positive then it could be asthma but it is as it is having like poor uh, specificity so like it could be due to other uh, diseases also like they are telling allergic rhinitis, cystic fibrosis, and bronchopulmonary dysplasia and COPD. These things uh, can also lead to bron uh, positive bronchial provocation test. So these tests are having uh, moderate, moderately sensitive and uh, limited specificity. Now when it comes to uh, allergy test. So what are these allergy tests? They are telling the presence of atopy increases the probability like patient can have allergic asthma, but this is not specific for asthma, and uh, it can present in all as other asthma phenotypes also. Atopic status can be identified by a screen, by a screen uh, prick test or measuring the specific immunoglobin um, IgE levels in serum. So they are telling like we use a screen prick, uh, a screen prick test with common environmental allergens and it is, it is very simple test and it is rapid to perform. When performed by experienced tester with a standard extract is inexpensive and high is having high sensitivity. But they are telling measurement of a serum IgE level is not reliable then a uh, skin test and it is also more expensive so like they are telling like skin prick test is uh, a good test then a uh, serum ig level then comes a uh, fractional concentration of the exhaled nitric oxide pheno it is modestly associated with the level of uh, sputum and blood eosinophils so they are telling like pheno used to increase fractional ex, uh, uh, fractional concentration of exhaled nitrogen oxide nitric oxide used to increase in patient with asthma very very important but this is also not like a it is not also diagnostic uh, test now we'll comes to a step for confirming the diagnosis of asthma in patient with already taking controller treatment so what we have to do in patient with who are already taking controller uh, treatment so they are telling if patient current status is like variable uh, they're telling if variable respiratory symptoms and variable ear flow limitations are there then diagnosis is confirmed and we should continue the treatment and assess the level of asthma control and review control treatment then we'll check like if variable respiratory symptoms are there but there is no airflow limitations so pft pf are normal then they are telling we should uh, repeat the spirometry with uh, withholding bronchodilators as we know like we should withhold saba for four hours and for uh, 24 hours for twice daily ics lava and once daily ics lava we, we have to hold for 36 hours or during symptoms we can uh, repeat spirometry check between widget variability of fe1 and bronchodilator responsiveness if it's still normal then we consider for other diagnosis and they are telling if fev1 is more than 70 percent of predicted then we should consider a step down and we uh, we will tell patient to follow up after two to four weeks if fev1 is less than 70 percent then we will tell patient for stepping up the controller treatment and follow up after three months and after three months we used to assess, reassess the symptoms and lung function so uh, if there is no response after three months, then we will refer patient for diagnosis and investigation, other investigations. Third condition is like few respiratory symptoms are there and normal lung function and no variable 
air flow limitation limitations is there like symptoms also reduced and there is no uh, pft pfr finding is there then they are telling consider repeating bronchodilator responsiveness test again with withholding bronchodilator they are telling if symptoms emerge or lung function falls asthma is confirmed then we will step up the control treatment to previous lowest effective dose if there is no change in symptoms or lung function at lowest control step then we will consider uh, seizing the control and uh, monitor patient closely for 12 months so after uh, stopping the treatment for asthma in this patient we will closely monitor patient after till like uh, 12 months uh, like last condition is patient is having persistent shortness of breath and persistent air flow limitation then they are telling step up control treatment for three months then reassess the symptom of lung function if no response is there then resume previous treatment and refer patient for other diagnosis and we can consider it like asthma copd overlap very well this is like new terminology they are telling how to step down very well how to step down the control treatment to help the diagnosis help confirm the diagnosis of asthma so sir, first of all we have to like assess the patient document the patient's current status including asthma control and lung function if the patient has risk factor of asthma exacerbation do not step down the treatment with without close supervision so do not step down if patient is having risk factor for uh, asthma exacerbation if they are uh, we have to choose the suitable time like there should be no respiratory infection not going uh, away on vacation patient is not going for vacations and not patient is not pregnant and they are telling provide patient a written asthma action plan so the patient know how to recognize and respond if symptoms worsen ensure they have enough medication to resume their previous dose of asthma if worsens then we will come to adjust how to adjust the dose they are telling show the patient how to reduce their ics dose by 25 to 50 percent or stop extra controller like they have to stop lava leukotriene receptor antagonist and they should continue only ices and it should also be reduced by 25 to 50 percent and review after two to four weeks as we know in step down we, we used to uh, review after two to four weeks and in step up we used to review after three months then they are telling review response so they are telling repeat assessment of asthma control and lung function test we should repeat and after like uh, <clears throat> after two to three weeks we will repeat and uh, if we are uh, stopping the treatment then we should follow patient for at least like 12 months